Attention ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the open Q&A session with Marcelo Fernandes. It's me, it's me, yes. Uh, I love, I love to spend time with you guys, yeah. I do all my best to touch base, to touch base almost every week, yes, um, bringing some relevant topic related to Lean Six Sigma and also uh, opening up for, for questions. And today is a day that you can ask any questions. All questions are welcomed, yeah? Related to Lean Six Sigma, right? So I can see James, Mohamed, Joshua, Yotam, Motebang, uh, Rafik, Ernest, how are you guys? I hope you all are doing amazingly, okay? <coughs> so please, let's get started. And I think we have a rather question. Kindly assist on how to run and interpret. Wow, Tuck is multiple comparison. Normality and variance equivalence. Wow, Mohammed. That's a yeah, that's that's a that's a deep one. That's a deep one, okay? Uh, and because here we have people from um, all different belts. And by the way, where are you, Mohammed? Are you a white belt, a yellow, green, black, or, or, or master? Please let us know, okay? Let us know. Uh, and then let, let's talk about Turkey's multiple comparison. Yeah, let's, let's talk about Turkey's multiple comparison. Yeah, it's an amazing, it's an amazing, it's an amazing topic. It's a very technical topic. Yeah, and just to give, um, just to give an overview, especially for people that are starting their Lean Six Sigma journey. Uh, one of the most powerful techniques in Lean Six Sigma is ANOVA. Yeah is ANOVA, very powerful, very powerful, analysis of variance, yeah? And uh, with analysis of variance, we can check, check if the population mean, the population mean, one population mean is different, yeah? statistically significantly different from uh, from another mean yes on a on a group of two or more data sets yeah so let's suppose you have you want to check let's suppose you want to check different restaurants yeah and let's suppose we are checking the temperature of the cheese bread yeah let's suppose the or the temperature of the oven yeah, where the cheese bread is being made. So, picture that, picture that. And if you are new to that, I am opening up a software named uh, Minitab. Yeah, super cool. Um, so let's suppose I have oven one, I have oven two, I have oven three, I have oven four, I have oven five, oven six, yeah? And then we know that the, the, the best temperature to bake a cheese bread is 180 degrees. Yes, degrees. So I'm going to generate here some normal data. Yeah, 30 data, uh, 180. Let's put the standard deviation of 2. And uh, for all of them, yes, I am generating some random data so we can play, we can play around a little bit. And then now you guys look at me because I'll do some I'll do some magic here. I'm gonna change I'm gonna change just one just one data set. Yeah, on purpose for sure for for uh, learning learning purpose, okay? <clears throat> and so now we have this situation. We have 30 samples, yeah, from each oven. Um, I've measured the temperature, you know, the temperature inside the oven 30 times, you know, during a period of one week, for example. 
beautiful yeah and i want to check if there is any oven with a temperature yeah that is different from another oven temperature uh in a way that is statistically significant so please type here yes if you understood the contest yeah the context i am uh, uh answering an amazing question from mohammed from mohammed i i know i should know that mohammed i should know this from the top of my mind from the top of my heart but are you my my green belt or are you certified by Are you uh, Marcelinho's green belt? Yeah. Please let me know. Yeah. Beautiful. Excellent. So let's take a look. The very first thing is wonderful, Mohammed. Wonderful. Wonderful. The very first thing, ANOVA. ANOVA. Yeah. So with ANOVA analysis of variance, we will just check if, if, there is any if there is any population mean that is different at least from another population mean and why am i saying population mean because this is uh, inferential statistics we are analyzing samples but the conclusions are about the population yeah and again if you are a beginner Please don't get scared, okay? Um, it sounds a little bit uh, uh, scary sometimes, but it's not. It is beautiful and very powerful. This is a technique that is behind many, many things that you use in your day-to-day -day life. You know, like vitamins, uh, water, you know, like cell phone. There is a lot of inferential statistics, you know, during the production and also during the development yeah, of these products. Beautiful. So, no hypothesis, no hypothesis means status quo. So it's like I'm saying, for example, Mohammed and I have also Arturo. If you guys tell me, uh, I need to select one, one of them to play soccer with me, to play football with me. I need to select right now Mohamed Abulahi um, or, or Arturo Rodriguez, yeah? Um, but I have never seen, seen they, they playing, you know, football. So I don't know how do they play. I don't know if they are good or not. So, I mean, at this point, until someone comes with evidences for me, yeah? So initially, what I can say is I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume that Mohammed plays soccer like Arturo. That, that's the best I can do. It is the best I can do. What, what, what can I do differently from that? I can just assume that Mohammed plays, you know, soccer at the same level of Arturo. The same thing here. I don't know the ovens. I don't know the ovens. I have just collected some data. But at this point, the status quo, the, you know, the, 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 what we call no, no hypothesis, N-U-L-L, -L, is all means are equal. They are all the same. Yeah. Yeah, they are all the same. They are all the same. Yeah. And then what is, and then what is, what is what we call alternative hypothesis? What is the alternative hypothesis? Is not all means are equal. Not all means are equal. So what is this? Not all means are equal. It, uh, what, what I'm saying is at least at least one mean is different from another so there is at least at least a you know oven one is different for for example from oven five i don't know yeah Th this is important because many people misunderstand anova 
saying that uh, not all means are equal, it means one mean is different from all the others. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah? So what we are saying is at least one mean is different from another. Yeah? From another. Yeah? And then there is a significance level. Significance level is one minus one minus confidence level, yeah? And then there is the famous 95% confidence level. So one, uh, I mean, 100%, yeah? Uh, one minus 0 0.95 or 100% minus 95%, it's 5% the significance, significance level. So what's the importance of significance level? After you state your conclusion after you state your conclusion using inferential statistics we will never be 100% confident never no one <laughs> no one will be if is if someone tells you that using inferential statistics, look, looking at a sample and, uh, and taking conclusions about population, if anyone says that, they are, that he or she is 100% confident, uh, he or she is lying. Yeah? It is impossible. It is impossible. You can have confidence level of 99.9999999. Yeah? 10 decimal places, but 100% sharp, no. So significance level, yeah, significance level, it's a very good way to express risk, risk. So in very simple words, I can argue that everything that we are doing here, the conclusions <laughs> come with a 5% risk, yeah? Mainly, mainly if we state that one mean is different from another. If we raise our hand and state that one mean is different from another, if we, if we state that, we need to reinforce that our conclusion was obtained at a significance level of five percent it is very important because in very <laughs> in very simple words what we are saying is because there is always a risk that we state the difference but in fact the difference does not exist there is always a, this risk will always exist you know always and here what we are saying is that we accept, we accept a risk up to 5%. Yeah, this is our significance level. Significance level, yeah? So, if you are a, a green belt or if you are a black belt, you know that now it's time to take a look on our p-value. If our, if our p-value is less than 0.05, if it is less than 0.05, we should reject reject the no hypothesis yeah we should reject the no hypothesis and uh, so because p value is less than our alpha yeah our significance level it's like we are saying mm, it's okay the risk the risk is not that high i can increase the number of decimal places here see with 16 decimal places I, I do not have, I do not see, you know, I, I see just zeros, you know, at some point, we'll have a number, at some point, yeah, but with 16 decimal places, we were not able to see, so, so what does it mean, what does it mean in practical terms, what does it mean in practical terms, there is, there is at least, at least one oven, one oven, that has an a inferred a projected 
temperature, population temperature, there is one, one oven that has a temperature that is significantly different from another oven. There is. There is. And then, what is the natural, natural next question? What is the natural next question? You guys tell me. You guys tell me. You guys tell me. I am glad to know you guys are enjoying. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Because at this point, I can just say that one oven is different from another. What's the natural next question? The natural, the natural, the obvious next question is which oven? You know? Am I talking about oven number one, oven number two, oven number three? You know, which, which oven? And then that's when, that's when, that's when Tucky's multiple comparison plays a very important role. Very important role. Yeah. By the way, this is the very same guy, Mohammed. I don't know if you know that. That created box plot. It's the very same guy. Yeah. And then you guys will find it here. Under ANOVA, there is comparisons. And so you can run comparison procedures assuming equal variance, Turkey. Yeah. And so this is very powerful, very powerful. Because I have a kind of pairwise comparison. Yeah, I have oven two versus oven one, oven three versus oven one, oven four versus oven one, oven five versus oven one, oven six versus oven one. Are, are we on the same page? We are crossing in pairs, you know, all ovens, yeah? Type here on our chat if if we are together, please. Type here in our chat if we are together. I don't I don't know if I like that because the intervals are too are too narrow. Let me let me do one thing here. So I can create, I think, a better example. I, would think, I believe this one will be. No, I want. I want even better. I want even better. Yeah, that's that's a good one to to explain the concept. So see, <clears throat> type here in our chat window if you can see an interval. It's a confidence interval, CI, confidence interval at which level? Nine five percent. Yeah, this is the confidence level. Yeah, so we have confidence intervals that were built at this uh, level, nine five percent. But the, 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 the intervals were constructed for the differences. For the differences. And come on, guys, help me. If we have A, if we have something here, and we have another thing here, and the difference is zero, what does it mean? What does it mean? If I take anything, you know, and I make this thing minus another thing and the difference is zero, is zero, it means yes, Nana, yes, Ernest, yes, Vincent, future black belt. <laughs> is there anyone else that signed up for black belt? already anyone else and i'm sorry if i 
I, I, I want to say, I think Mohammed has registered as well, right, Mohammed? I know, I know Vincent for sure. Anyone else? I know Kembong, Kembong as well, I think. Yeah. So, uh, yes, wonderful. That's amazing. Looking forward. Next, next Tuesday. Next is next Tuesday at this very same time. <clears throat> we'll be together. We'll be together. And the Q&A session next week will be... No, next week we don't have. We don't have because next week we'll be recording another another training. Yeah? Uh, yes, yes, Ernest. Um, I'll just finish this explanation. Or, or if, you, if you guys want to take a look in the website. Yeah? In the website. So the... the yeah, take a look there. I can see if the I sh I should know these all these links from the top of my mind, but I but I don't. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the link I have just I have just shared here with you guys. Okay. So uh, so let's go back there. Let's go back there. <clears throat> so all confidence intervals where zero is present they suggest that the difference is not that huge the difference is not statistically significant so you guys tell me the difference between oven three and one you know it is it is statistically significant or not? You guys tell me here, yes or not? Wonderful, Rafik. Looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, Bosto. Yeah, Bolele as well. Wonderful. Beautiful, Vincent. You are right. So here, the difference is not statistically significant. Here, it is not. Here, it is not. Here, it is not. But here, it is. So the difference between oven two and oven one. It is statistically significant. And by the way, it's negative, meaning, meaning that oven 2 minus oven 1, if the mean is negative, it means what? That oven 1 has a higher temperature, has a higher temperature than oven 2, yeah? And here it is positive, meaning oven 3 has a higher temperature than oven 2. Oven four, higher temperature than oven two. Higher, uh, oven five, higher temperature than oven two. Yeah? So this is a very powerful procedure. Very powerful procedure. Yeah? Very powerful. Very helpful. I think it's very friendly to present to any audience. Yeah? To any audience. Yeah, Tucky's multiple comparison. Uh, it's a, um, it's a, uh, it's an additional step when you run. It's an important additional step when you run ANOVA. Yeah, was that helpful? Was that helpful? Yeah, I know that you've asked about normality and uh, equivalence test, Mohammed. But if you don't mind, just for me to address uh, questions for from other people as well. The normality is a very important, it's a very important topic as well. And uh, equivalence test too, yeah. Equi equivalence test, it is not, uh, uh, in my humble opinion, extremely relevant. This is extremely relevant. Normality, extremely relevant, yeah. Equivalence test, mm, medium, medium, medium high. Medium high. This is high. This is very high. But but equivalence is, is medium. Yeah. So let me see the other questions. Let me see the other questions. Please, guys, feel free to, to ask uh, your questions. How does Lean Six Sigma help in aviation, Ernest? That's a that's a that's a very great question. So there are many ways. There are many ways. 
there are many ways. If we think in terms of the construction process, so for example, we have here in uh, Itajubá, in my city, uh, a unit of Airbus for helicopters. That's fancy, right? Fancy. There is a helicopter a manufacturing plant here in my city, and I have many students there. So I'm lucky enough to see you know, many, many examples. I had a chance to visit many, many times um, the co this company. Yeah, they have just launched, released a, a brand new model, helicopter model, you know, full of, you know, high tech uh, elements and uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So uh, I have a close friend named Fabricio. He's an expert in lean during the assembly process, because see, it's not high volume, Ernest. It is not high volume. They do not produce, uh, at Philips, we used to produce 20,000 TVs per day. They do not do 20,000 helicopters per day, right? But during the process of, I don't know, one year, two years, you know, to deliver one or two helicopters, you know, you can operate with sharp eyes against waste and here i'm talking about scrap i'm talking about rework here i'm talking about uh inventory material here i'm talking about waiting here i'm talking about over processing putting a value that is disproportional to what clients are paying here we are talking about overproduction yeah for the service that comes with the product, yeah? And and so on the, on the lean point of view, on the Six Sigma point of view, then we are talking about variation. And it is hard. It is hard because, again, the volume is not high. So one tool that is beautifully applied in, um, in aviation is, is BOE, design of experiments. Design of experiments you know, to optimize, yeah, optimize uh, CTQs, critical to quality, elements of, of the components, yeah, of the components. I have many friends in Embraer, it's an important company here in Brazil, that I have one friend named Antonio that did his master's, he, he did his master's, the application was in Embraer with design of experiments, yeah. With design experiments, of experiments. So at the same time, it's challenging because you don't have high volume. You can apply uh, tools and techniques uh, iso isolated. You know, like um, like um, there is an expression for that. I forgot in English when you use just one tool, um, just one tool. You know, when you are using um the tool alone you know there is an expression for that in english i'm sorry for my for my limited <laughs> for my limited english i wanted to learn uh, ad hoc ad hoc ad hoc so you can run your full project yes or you can run pieces you know of the you can apply specific tools and techniques. Yeah, beautiful. Please let me know, Ernest, if my answer was helpful. Yeah, was helpful. Hello from Botswana. How does Lean Six Sigma help in business administration and project management? Again, I'll talk about um i'll talk about uh waste reduction waste reduction so it is so powerful james when you first of all listen to the voice of the customer map the value stream and fight waste to reduce or to eliminate you know just just do that out of the five lean principles Try to try to play with these three elements. These three elements. Identify your customer. Listen to the voice of the customer, and then list what is important for your customer. After that, you go back to your process and you map 
out your process. You map your process. And then you just start reflecting, you know, if these steps really drive your product or service to that list of things that are important to client. Just that. The, the other two lean principles are enable flow and uh, strive for perfection. Yeah. But if you apply the first three ones, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed, James. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Bolele, we, let me see, no, I don't think we'll be talking about this, about this um, in Black Belt. Let me see if I find an, an easy way to explain that. Let me see if I find an easy way to explain that. Um, I think the... The easiest way to explain that the easiest way to explain that, let me see, I think. can consider yeah I, I would just consider like regular regular data but I don't know if that will be that will be helpful um, be helpful let me try here uh, to explain a way that that anyone can can understand okay um can understand let's suppose you have two variables okay two variables you have two variables x and y um Yeah, I'm gonna play with that. Okay, okay. Amount, amount of cheese, amount of cheese, and happiness, and happiness, yeah. and happiness. Just that, amount of cheese and happiness. Simple like that. Amount of cheese and happiness. Yeah. So. Um, if I don't eat any, I, I don't know if you guys know, I am addicted to, to cheese, yeah? And also cheese bread. If I don't eat any cheese, my happiness is zero. If I eat 10 grams of cheese, my happiness is two. If I eat 20, then my happiness is three. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100 yeah then my happiness is 4 is is 5 is 6 is 8 it's 8 as well then it's 9 then it's 10 and it's 10 okay <clears throat> beautiful beautiful i can check i can check i can check if one thing is somehow connected to another thing using very simple terms i can see if happiness is a function of the amount of cheese meaning wow if you want to see marcelo happy just give him cheese <laughs> you know so you can predict my happiness you know beautiful so you can use something that we call regression yeah regression uh, happiness, amount of cheese, beautiful. Very likely a linear model will work beautifully. Yeah, will work beautifully. Yeah. And I have here something that we call R squared. 
that I don't want to go very much into the technicalities, but R squared, it's the amount of um, variation in X in Y that is explained by the variation in X. Yeah, it's the amount of variation in Y that is explained by the variation in X. Yeah. This R squared probably comes from, is connected to an R. An R. Where's the R? I see the R squared. But where's the R? Yeah. And then there is a beautiful concept um, of a guy. Yeah. Oops. Let me share here. of a guy named Carl Pearson, yeah? Um, Pearson, um, his work was recognized before, um, before Fisher, before Fisher. And uh, some people, Ronald Fisher, Fisher, Fisher maybe, maybe is the, um, maybe is the most important name you know, when we talk about statistics in Lean Six Sigma or maybe statistics in general. Yeah. Many people say that he's the successor of Charles Darwin. Ronald Fisher. Yeah. Ronald Fisher, UK, UK. And um, but Pearson, Carl Pearson uh, came came first. And many people say that they had like huge debates. People say that at some time Pearson was kind of chasing, you know, uh, Fisher just to find errors, you know, because Fisher was shining so much that Pearson started, you know, like chasing. We don't know if this is fully true or not, but we, we listen here and there, um, you know, these kind of stories, you know, uh, in, including uh, from people, including uh, people from the UK, you know. So, uh, where is this R? This R is in uh, correlation. Correlation. So, if we go there, if we go there, stat regression, uh, basic statistics, correlation, yeah, I can put amount of cheese and happiness. But I don't know who is Y, who is X. I don't know. I just want to check if one is connected to another. And then you have, you have an R. See, you have an R. Yeah, it's a, a, a Pearson correlation coefficient. This R, this R varies from minus one to plus one, Bolelli varies from minus one to plus one. So the closer to minus one, the closer to minus one, the more negative will be the correlation. So for example, the more cheese, if I start, start eating cheese, you know, the more I eat, the more reduced will be my bank account because cheese is expensive. Depending on the cheese, it's expensive. So the amount of cheese is increasing and my bank account is decreasing. So there is a negative correlation. Cheese and happiness, positive correlation. The amount of cheese in my stomach is increasing. My happiness is increasing, positive correlation. Then it goes to one, yeah, to plus one. So correlation, we know the direction, what we call direction. Yeah, we know if it's negative and positive, but also the strength. We know the strength. Because if I tell you, hey, Bolele, I just ran an analysis here and the correlation is 0 0.99. You know that the correlation is positive and very strong very strong by the way some people say some literature points to 0.7 when it's more than 0.7 it's strong some literature 0.9 yeah 
when it's above even if you run on minitab using the assistant assistant you have um, no not the way using assistant See, you have different colors here, see? So for R squared, see, when it's uh, above 90%, you know, the color is a little bit different. Yeah, it's darker, yeah? And then you have 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, yeah? So, uh, so correlation gives you, gives you the direction, so, if it is zero, then there is no correlation. The data is scattered, yeah? The closer to plus one, the more positive, yeah? And again, stronger, yeah? The closer to minus one, the more negative, and stronger as well, strong negative. Covariance, covariance, you get a number. You get a number, take a look here. If we run a covariance, a covariance analysis you get a number amount of cheese and happiness yeah so see amount of cheese versus happiness I got a one 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 so I mean I, I know it is positive I know it is positive but you don't know how strong is that so I think the easiest way to explain the difference between correlation and covariance is correlation, you get two elements. You get direction and strength. And covariance, you get only, only direction. You don't get strength, yeah? And I am saying only because Covariance is very much useful in other analysis. This number, these numbers are very much useful in other analysis. Yeah, so sometimes a covariance analysis itself does not bring a lot of value to the table, but it's a kind of pepper, you know, it's a kind of important element for future analysis. Yeah, was that helpful? Boleli, was that helpful? Yeah. World travel. Uh, you, you are you a green belt world travel? Yeah. The, yeah. The reason we have multiple instructors is because each instructor has a different flavor. So I think it is important to to give you guys. So for green belt students, they do have. Uh, there is a, one more instructor. So I think it's important for you guys to feel different flavors, you know, different flavors. But but I appreciate your, I appreciate your words. Yeah. Mm, airline operations beautiful no i would strongly recommend you to check united and emirates we do have ernest right now a green belt that is doing an amazing job she works for emirates she's from the uae and um and uh i mean they are doing an amazing job there yeah unfortunately i cannot <laughs> i cannot give like details about what they are doing yes but there is a lot of amazing things but I strongly recommend you taking a look on what United Airlines, what they do in terms of operational excellence. Yeah, United Airlines and uh, and uh, in terms of um, someone asked me about hotel brands. I strongly recommend checking Marriott. Marriott, they have an ins and a beautiful OPEX program. Marriott, yeah, like the... Courtyard, the Renaissance, JW, they have an amazing OPEX program. Yeah. 
Uh, what about using Lean Six Sigma in the service industry? Yeah, like in the health sector. Yeah. So now maybe this is the filet mignon right now because you can, I have one student, she talked about this openly, so I believe I can talk as well. She's running a project right now to reduce the lead time in, uh, in ER emergency room. Yeah, the, the, the waiting time. So the applicability is huge, huge, huge. Immense, yeah. Can we have a session about VSM? Yes, yes, we can, Yosra. I'm going to take note of this. Yeah. Yeah. So, sometimes I just feel, Yosra, that when we touch VSM, people get too much like um, analysis paralysis, analysis paralysis with, you know, all the elements and we just need to keep in our hearts that uh, the simplicity is powerful. Simplicity is powerful. So why are we mapping out the process? Because we want to understand current processes, current state, yeah? So many times a simple, you know, detailed PMAP will work beautifully. I prefer SIPOC and detailed PMAP. I am not a huge fan of VSM. I am not a huge fan of VSM, yeah? But it is important, yeah? It is important. O Thiago Kleck, legal, cara. Beleza, Thiago. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Obrigado, amigo. Yeah. No, today is an open Q&A. This is not a white belt. If you are a white belt, our session two is tomorrow. Session two is tomorrow, okay? Today it is not a white belt. I'm a graduate mining engineer and my job title is continuous improvement engineer working on a good mining gun. That's amazing, David. Good for you. Congratulations. Keep up your amazing work. Okay. Is it possible to do VSM in the free Minitab? Not in the what we call MSS, Minitab Statistical Software, but you can do on what we call, um, what you call workstation, you know, so there is another You guys can download, let me see. Not, <laughs> that was funny, that was funny. Uh, Minitab Workspace, right? Minitab Workspace. So if you guys can take a look, let me, let me share this with you. In Minitab Workspace, you can run Ah, yeah, you guys will see. Minitab Workspace. You, you can run VSMs, yeah? And uh, guys, I, I need to check that. I believe there is a free version of Workspace as well. I believe there is. You guys can check online minitab.com there is a 30-day version yeah for vsm yeah beautiful wonderful Bolene. that's wonderful white belt is tomorrow yes this is not a, a white belt session this is an open q a so here we get questions from white from yellow from green from black yeah it is maybe a little bit confusing because it's at the same time yeah so this is not a white belt training. White belt is tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much. Next week, we'll not have Q&A. And uh, if there is any white belt here, we'll be together tomorrow. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all your questions. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.